It seems to me there are several big issues uh, surrounding whirling disease that we would like some answers to. How long has the disease been in Alberta? Where is it located? And what can we do to prevent its spread? Unfortunately, some of those questions may never be answered. We don't know when it got here. We did have a, a prevention program in place with monitoring until about 2002. And so I would say we probably didn't have it before then. Best case scenario, it's been here for a while and it doesn't seem to be impacting the wild trout. Having found it only last summer, we haven't seen any major population declines or recruitment issues in the wild trout populations. It is a big priority this season moving ahead. We'll be hiring staff and really spending a lot of time working on that issue and trying to dig down into what kind of impact will it have here in Alberta. Whirling disease is a microscopic parasite that affects salmonid fish. It was detected for the first time in Canada at Johnson Lake in Banff National Park in August 2016. The disease poses a serious threat to trout and mountain whitefish in Alberta as it can cause deformities affecting the ability of fish to swim, eat and escape predators and often resulting in mortalities. So the next obvious question is what can we do about it? There are some answers on that front. Perhaps the first stage is determining where whirling disease is located. So whirling disease is really tricky because you can't just sample the water for the presence of whirling disease, you actually have to sample the fish. So that's why we see kind of a lag time in the, the monitoring results because it's taking a while to process all these fish that have to be sampled. You have to actually analyze their tissue to see if they have whirling disease or not. The government will continue to monitor watersheds for whirling disease and will update all of us on where new locations are found. For the most up-to-date results, search whirling disease at aep.alberta.ca. Opening the lines of communication between different provincial and federal agencies, industry and the recreational community is another step that has been taken. Through our work with the Whirling Disease Program, we have actually established a Whirling Disease Committee. And the committee uh, comprises of our federal and provincial partners, but as well as key stakeholders. We're able to have very good discussions and dialogue. While dealing with whirling disease in the wild is one thing, over 200 ponds are under a temporary suspension from stocking due to possible infected fish from some hatcheries We've done our risk management on those and uh, have identified about 250 ponds that we feel are of high or moderate risk to spreading or perpetuating the disease in Alberta. This has resulted in four private fish hatchery facilities being shut down. And plans are well underway to ensure new biosecurity measures are put into place to reduce the chance of spreading whirling disease from a hatchery into fish habitat. Monitoring and testing are a cornerstone to environment and parks response to better understanding this disease. To this end, a field collection site was established at a recent fishing event in Fort Saskatchewan. The collection site did a couple of things. First, it allowed researchers to talk directly with anglers and answer any questions they may have about the disease. Second, biologists were able to get fish samples which will be analyzed at the new Whirling Disease Laboratory located near Vegerville. Yeah, and thanks to, for contributing to yeah, science. Yeah. And these ones are heads, usually we have full bodies. But these are all from um, a stocked pond. While analyzing tissue samples under a microscope may lead to eventually a better understanding of whirling disease, it does little to help us prevent the spread. This is where anglers, government staff and contractors all have a role to play. In fact, the provincial government has come up with a decontamination protocol for all government staff and contractors to ensure that the spread of whirling disease and other aquatic invasive species are not introduced or spread to water bodies across the province. We are essentially adding on to our kind of boat focus clean drain dry campaign by really targeting anglers and their gear with a clean drain dry your gear message. And so that is really simple. It's you know making sure that if you're fishing in positive waters, you know, consider having dedicated gear that you only use there so that you're not spreading it to other places. 
The most important thing is that if you know that whirling disease is present, say you're an angler in the Bow River, try to have equipment, waders that you only use in the Bow River if possible. If you use felt sold waders, which we do not recommend, try to get the ones that you can, you can actually replace the felt and clean them and dry them out before you use them again, or just get the other hard, you know, hard sold boots. And then making sure you're not carrying water around, you're not carrying fish or fish parts. The whirling disease can be transported by live fish, by dead fish, by fish parts. So make sure that you're really vigilant about throwing things in the trash at the source, not taking them with you. Spending a day out on the water has just become a little bit more involved, but failing to clean our equipment could lead to serious consequences down the road. Till next time, I'm Michael Short, Let's Go Outdoors.